Alright, what's up guys? So, uh, Ray, she has uploaded a video titled Petition to End Gabby Hanna. I mean, she she done put herself in some situations where I I think, uh, you know, overall it doesn't really matter to me. Like, I, I really don't. I've even had where people started up petitions about me. So that's why I'm like, I don't really care when it comes to those petitions and stuff, but... Uh, no, let's go ahead and let's, let's see, let's see what this, uh, petition, um, uh, thing is gonna be all about. But first things first, guys, make sure y'all go show the most amount of love to my good friend Ray, uh, on her channel Hot Tea, her personal channel Ray Rahimi, and her business channel Build Your Pocket. But in that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video. Hey guys, Assuming welcome back intros. to my channel. In today's video, we have a few small stories that have been happening throughout the week, including a <clears> petition <throat> to delete Gabby Hanna's That's channel, crazy. Jeffree Star on the BFFs podcast. Yeah, it's like I had somebody where they, they tried to do that with me and stuff, and it's just overall like using up like fabricated stories about me and, you know, trying to do everything in their power to try to in me and stuff so i i get it i feel it and stuff i understand why people do that and that's just you know those people that just got way too much uh time on their hands and you know it's like you know real petitions i think people can like you know actually use their time to like read it and look through it a petition about a youtuber to delete their channel i feel like those those are the petitions where i'm like i don't care who it is it could be the worst youtuber of all time i just think that it's like I don't think YouTube's going to go through all that trouble. I don't think anybody is going to go through all that trouble to try to do that much. But, no, there's people that actually will. I'm like, yeah, it's just, you know, haters. But, anyways. Trisha Paytas and more. But before we get into all of the tea, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't and turn your post notifications on. Also, give this video a thumbs up and comment anything you want down below. All right, let's get into the tea. So first on our list oh, is, of go. course, a daily feature on this channel. At this point, Gabby Hanna. There's been a lot and going on with did, I feel like I might have seen that video, and it just dawned to me now that she, she did, like, a glasses dance, like... All right, you know what? Let me just... Let me fix my eyebrows. I don't want them to, you know, be all weird looking and stuff. But anyway, In our series, we've covered it all, so make sure to check out these videos if you haven't yet for more context. But what's new with her, you may ask? Well, we have a few things about Gabby to talk about. First is a petition for her channel to be deleted, which Deaf Noodles tweeted about. It's on change.org and called to delete Gabby Hanna's YouTube channel. Some of the people who have signed this petition said, how can you live with yourself knowing you'd rather hear a story over the victims? Disgusting human being. I'm signing because she's legitimately evil. She should not be an influencer because she's a terrible role model and hurts the fans she has by showing them that it's okay to be a horrible person. She shouldn't be able to release content and her YouTube video should be deleted. This is honestly just fuck funny let's check to see how many people signed this oh my god this is hilarious Dang. at the time that i'm recording this over 7500 people have signed wow. this petition and now yes. they're aiming for 10,000 people as well next on gabby a few posts from her patreon got leaked and one of them she talks about how she's been handling the feedback on the series which by the way she's had the likes and dislikes disabled throughout the whole series and in the video about angelica Owls, she turned off comments mm. as well so i don't know how exactly well, it's like my see that's the thing because i you know if i have something in my heart to say about somebody you know like yeah leaving a comment can be effective but that's the thing and i'm like because it's stuff that i've done the comment can very well get deleted or, you know, yeah, comments can get turned off. So that's why I'm like, I always, you know, if I got something to say, I'm going to say it on a video or I'm going to say it in like a, a podcast or something on one of my, or my podcast. But, um, yeah, that's, that's why I'm like, I don't usually, cause I'm like, okay, even when I do reaction videos, I'm reacting to friends. Like, yeah, I know I can, um, overall like leave a comment and stuff, but I'm like, you know, I, I whatever I'm going to say in the comments, I've already said in the video. So really, at the end of the day, the only thing that I can say is like, I mean, there has been times I've left comments and stuff, but I just, that's the thing. I'm like, I always get to that point where I'm just like, dang, what can I leave in the comment section? It's like trying to come up with a title of the song sometimes. It's like, what can I say? Like, I'm here. It's like, you got the spotlight on, spotlight on you and you just up on stage holding the microphone like, 
well dang what what do i what do i say but but no that's that's how i feel with the comments but anyways you can get all the feedback on all of this by not letting people share their thoughts on the series now you can say that gabby just wanted to post her side and not really look into what people have to say which she did mention in the intro of her series however in her patreon post she's acting like she doesn't care about haters but insists that history will be on her side the way she phrases it makes it sound like a cult almost she yeah. goes hi babes i know you're probably wondering and yeah Yes, I'm okay. I am f***ing bulletproof at this point. I literally don't give a f*** about anything involving strangers on the internet, haha. <laughs> then why did you just come out with like a 20 part series about what strangers think about you on the internet? I just don't understand. No hate, but just confused. Dude, none of my friends know anything about this outside what I tell them. They don't know anyone's name, the drama, they don't give a f***. Okay, but like, I also have a problem with people who like heavily troll on the internet yeah. or do whatever they want and say whatever they want on the internet. And then they just go, who cares? It's online shit. No one cares in real life. But bitch, like this yeah. actually has real life it's like, consequences. Yeah. Like you're hurting That's people. the thing. It's like, you're not gonna, you know, have pain on the internet. You're gonna have pain on your in your heart. So it's like whatever you do to a person, it's like, you know, you, you gotta own up to that in things, so. Yeah, I, you know, that's just, that's how I feel personally, but anyways. People in real life, it's not all just online. There's such a big f***ing world outside all of this weirdness and a huge audience of people who think more like us. Who's us? Like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess you're Patreon people. <laughs> The truth and history will be on my side. It may not be soon, it may not even be in this lifetime, but people will eventually look at my story and see the truth. Guys, do you guys actually think that like in 200 years or 300 years when all of us are dead, our kids will like look back at YouTube T from like 2021 and like try to like decipher who's who and like who's yes. in the right. That's just funny, man. I don't think they'll give a f like, who do you think you are? That's why it's there, for record. When people are... I just, you know... I don't know. I, I wouldn't want... I mean, I guess, like, if any of my videos were to be shown, like, years from now after I, like, I'm gone and stuff, like, I guess that would be, you know, cool for people to, like, see what I was doing, be like, you know, now at this moment. And to whoever it is, like, you know, I, I wonder what, like, you know, what TVs y'all is. They probably ain't gonna be TVs. They're gonna be like, what... Oh, they, those are them things that they used to watch back. Yeah, we don't we don't got those. They got like some like three D virtual reality like simulator where they could just sit down and just be watching SpongeBob and stuff. Like they right there in the middle of Krusty Krabs and things. But anyways, um, but no, like they uh, cause no, they actually they I've been seeing that on TikTok and I'm like, bro, I would love to try that out. But anyways, I just I highly doubt. Maybe if it's like if she has kids. Those would probably be, it just would be, like, down the, like, family tree and stuff. And then, you know, whatever they decide to do with it, then, yeah. But at the same time, and then, you know, then you're going to have it where it's, like, oh, uh, families of, like, everybody else and things. They're going to be, and it, it's honestly, if our videos are getting viewed, like, 200 years from now, there's going to be somebody 200 years from now that it looks similar to Gabby Hanna, like trying to defend Gabby Hanna and stuff. And then there's going to be somebody similar, you know, to uh, that looks like Jesse Smiles talking on Jesse Smiles. And then there's going to be me. And there's going to be my like third, fourth, like, you know, great grandchildren that's going to be watching, like, you know, reacting to this and things. And they're going to just be like, huh. This is what, like, my uh, third great-grandfather was um, reacting to when he was a YouTuber? Wow. I'm like, yeah, our grandfather, Tyler, he 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 was on some weird stuff. Why was he reacting to this? Hey, look, all right, I'm here to support my good friend Ray, okay? So, anyways, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm doing this. But. Ready to really see what they don't want to. And here are some people's responses to Gabby's statement. One user said, not in this lifetime, people will eventually see the truth. No one cares now. What makes her think that anyone will look back in the future and be like, man, that Gabby girl is right all along. <laughs> Another yeah. user said, the truth and history will be on my side. She literally just said the world is so big outside of YouTube. She seems to think she's some sort of historical figure. Someone else said, bro, that sounds like a cult. One more 
her post from Gabby's Patreon. She said, I just wanted to say thank you and I Gabby love you Nancy. whether you've been around a while or if you're new here. I've been staying silent about my abuse since 2015 and speaking it is the first time I felt truly free. I've been living in fear for so long, always worried about the next move. And now I don't have to ever wonder or guess. I've said everything I can. I spoke the truth. I have no skeletons left in my closet. I'm going to take a nap on my watermelon raft. Something else that got leaked from Gabby's Patreon was a clip from her podcast. In that clip, she is talking about why she referred to the Jesse Smiles sexual assault as drama. She basically bashed T-channels for conditioning her to think that's what people called it. I used in a DM to somebody, I was like, I used the word, uh, well, I can't remember the sentence, but I said, um, maybe around the time of drama. It's probably a sentence like that. Where I like, it's I like, didn't- There's no such thing as that form of drama. Like, drama is drama, but there's no such thing as that form of drama. So, yeah, that's, you, you gotta know, like, at the end of the day, like, that's not gonna slide with a lot of people. Especially people that sat down and they've like, they've they've dealt with that. Like they're traumatized by that type of stuff. I think the last thing that they want to hear is somebody referring to it as drama. Just because that person is a content creator, social media influencer, you know, somebody that's like heavily involved in the internet doesn't consider it drama. Like it's trauma. Like, if it's gonna be anything, it's gonna be trauma. Like, that's, like, stuff that's gonna traumatize them. You can't say, like, I, wow. Dang, like, that, like, that, like, compresses, like, my part of my brain, and it just, like, get smaller and stuff so I'm, I'm gonna probably have to read a couple of like encyclopedias and history books and a bunch of other things just to fill that space but yep like it's, it's been compressed so i'm like i'm I've, I've gotten a little bit dumber all right so but anyways you know a quick way to say the situation and like in shorthand i called it drama and then i got completely like chewed out for saying calling it drama like oh so this is just drama to you like what gabby has stated in her series and last year when she attempted to address her scandals that she was the only one standing up for jesse then why do you call what happened to her drama yeah. and later in that clip she adds that she mainly speaks about her youtube trauma and therapy also she mentions a story about a youtuber who slept with a minor some people were saying why is she so concerned with youtube drama if she thinks there are bigger issues out there and if she knows of an influencer who actually slept with a minor why hasn't she spoken to the police or something we can only speculate yeah. if that's true or not but at the end of the day it's so yeah she she kind of reminds me a lot of this guy that was like you know in my comment sections overall like you know just saying stuff like i guess i don't know just to, i guess bring attention to them and things i feel like you know with that though like where you are overall like you know saying calling you know things like that drama you know just trying to yeah you're just saying it for attention so but anyways obvious that Gabby attention does seeker. care about her series being liked and people being on her side but it's just hypocritical how she says i don't care about the haters and then proceeds to call people haters and how they are wrong and then jesse smiles tweets i want to throw up filming tonight this needs to end the video is long so it will be up tomorrow i'll share an exact time later today please don't worry about me or the baby i'm okay and just need this to be over oh my god you guys i hope it's not another three hour long video that you guys want me to summarize because i will freaking die this time <laughs> and last on Gabby, I swear, in Def Noodles' newest video, he interviewed Dustin Daly about his thoughts on Gabby. The interview was more of kind of like satire. Main points would be Dustin saying that Gabby is not a victim like she claims. He called her a narcissistic abuser and then Def Noodles was like, impossible, she calls other people that. My first question is, uh, how dare you? Yeah, how dare I call out somebody that's a public figure? that has harmed multiple people. Like, how dare I? How am I the wrong one? I mean, you should know this. You called out Gabby Hanna. Gabby Hanna is not a victim. I really don't even know 10,000 words. If I had to give you an amount of words, I'd say it would probably be about six, and it's that Gabby Hanna is a narcissistic abuser. No, that doesn't make any sense, because Gabby Hanna calls everybody else that. I know, but that's her argument, that, like, she's projecting. Sure, whatever. Dustin said that <laughs> the world is not against Gabby and that she distorts the truth. After that, he said Gabby needs to- I, I mean, I don't know. I There was at one point in time where I was like, I you know, I think I've said that in previous videos where it was like, I, I seen the hate that Gabby Hanna was getting and I'm like, bro, what did she do? Like, 
I yeah, I didn't know like of any of this stuff, so I was confused on it. I just was seeing people they was just like making videos like Gabby Hanna isn't funny or you know and it was but it was like well that's who it, they were that was mostly doing it was commentary channels. So I think like you know commentary channels they just pick and choose something and then it's like every commentary channel out there just goes after it because it's like I've been in the crossfires of that where commentary channels for any re reaction videos and commentary channels would see that. And be one person would be like, oh, I hate commentary uh, or I hate reaction videos. Next thing you know, uh, you guys like all these other smaller channels is doing the same thing. So and I, I feel like it was before all of this stuff had went. Well, it was when all this stuff had went down um, or before it went down. So, uh, yeah, it's I, I, I don't know. I, I think Gabby Hanna, you know, at one point in time, she was getting hate. And it was like, what is she getting hate for? But now it's like she's getting hate, and it's like, oh, okay, well, I understand now why she's getting Protect hate. Protect her so. mental health, because all of that drama that she's into can't be good on her. Tell me more about that. I do think that Gabby is misunderstood. I think that a lot of this drama and a lot of this controversy that comes from Gabby is because she's misunderstood. And while she may do bad things, I don't think that her intention is always bad. You know what I mean? Like, while she's going through all this stuff, it does look like she's going through different emotions and things. I do think that she needs to protect herself as far as, like, her mental health, because this can be a lot on people, you know? Then yeah. Dustin shared his opinion on how Gabby has damaged her career. Really damaged her career. If she would have got on camera and just told her story about how it affects her when people talk about her or criticize her art, it would have been one thing, and I think that that would have been well perceived. But her going on these tirades, these different videos where she's like almost, in my opinion, making a mockery of like mental illness and things like that, making it an aesthetic, that's where she lost the plot. If she would have just stuck to her and how she's been affected by different things on the internet, I think that she would have been okay. And lastly, he shared how Gabby attacked him for not posting a video on her during a difficult time in his life. Basically, she was making it seem like he refused to update or correct himself on a video that was about her. In reality, Dustin was dealing with the loss of a family member and just posted videos during that time that he was obliged to post, assuming it was a sponsored video, and Gabby's fans attacked him. He finished by saying that people don't want to hate Gabby, it's just that she addresses everything so poorly. Which is so true, like I genuinely do enjoy like watching Gabby, I think she's really entertaining, I like her personality. I used yeah, to, I was like, I remember I used to follow her back when she was uh, doing Vine videos, and it was like after uh, like Vine had ended, I remember I I stopped watching a lot of the uh, like Viners and stuff, and then until like David Dobrik, he kind of emerged from the scenes with his vlogs, and so I remember I started off kind of watching him, and then kind of slowly found my way to like finding these uh, Viners again, and um, yeah, there's like there's a lot of them. I mean, King Bash, he he still does his thing. And, but I just think it, it was a lot of the Viners from back then, though, where it's like that's probably why. Now, I think that's probably what enabled a lot of, like, this, you know, Gabby Hanna, like, I guess in a way, like, acting out is because all Viners, like, Lele Pons, King Bash, um, who, who else, uh, I, f I feel like it's them too, um, but dang, it was like, it was a lot of Viners from, like, back in the day that was, like, getting hate and stuff, and, you know, just for them, just simply just, I guess that transition into YouTube, and, you know, Gabby, she she just overall took it the wrong way. It's like I, I think you know if anything, she should just really focused on herself. And honestly, like that helps. Like where you just focus on yourself and you just only worry about bettering yourself as a. There's nothing in this world that can like you know bring you down when you're focusing on yourself and focusing on bettering your arts and craft. Nothing in this world can tear you down. So just my advice to everybody out there watch her stories all the time but i just can't i can't with this series moving on let's talk about jeffree star he is back on the internet he was on the bffs podcast and people seem to really like that interview it's worth mentioning that the hosts didn't really know him or anything about him mm. he got asked if he's really done some crazy things and why did he get canceled i, I have a, yeah i've said some crazy done some crazy and i've made amends with that but I think to keep mentioning it every six months, it's really old. In the interview, Jeffrey talks about how he thinks he is like a cockroach and he can't be canceled for good, which is exactly what Trisha Paytas says, but he keeps it moving and he's back from his break. Jeffrey also talks about how after each scandal, he comes back to the internet because he has a business and people who work for him and he can't let his business go. He has to run it and so on. Unlike with Shane, for example, who has been on a break for a year now. The thing is, because Dave and Josh don't really know Jeffrey, they don't really understand why people were so upset and against Jeffrey and Shane last year. So past bringing back the past and making it try to seem like it's Yeah, it's like, I think that's what it is a lot of times. It's all like, you know, the people that be hating on you, if they actually took the time to sit down and like, know you, hear you out, and all this other stuff, rather than like, oh, let me turn this into something where it's like, 
I lure you in like I want to know you, but I just only want to attack you. I don't want to have like a neutral conversation. Like I don't want to know your life goals and I don't want you to know about. My thing is, is this. To any of that, like people that have made hate videos on me, if they were to just sit down, have a conversation with me without bringing up any of that stuff and just actually just hear out like the things I have to say about like, you know, the world or whatever. And I'm like, bruh, like we can sit down and have a conversation like i'm my thing because i've always said that it's like i'm not here for the beef the drama the hate none of that so when you're like and that's the thing right? it's like when you're sitting down with a person and you don't know who they are you can end up being friends with that person my thing is like you could be friends with a crazy or with a crazy person sit them down in the room y'all talk about whatever you guys can talk about your favorite movies of all time favorite songs of all time uh what else favorite shoes of all time like bro i'm telling you like there'll be i was i'll probably sit in the room with some like mental like murderer or something they talk about oh yeah I, you know remember wearing jordans back in the day we sitting down talking about jordans and you had sworn we were like good friends and then once you see what their life is like it's like oh okay well, you know dang they living a reckless life and things but i just think where it's like People don't want to sit down and do that. They're all like, oh, I don't want to get to know you, none of that. I just want to argue, beef, start drama, cause problems and all that. So, yeah, it's like, that's why I'm like, I try to, I, now I'm just avoiding that. Like, people, I know uh, back, like, in the beginning of the year, uh, when I, like, I picked up on, um, like, Twitch streaming and people were trying to do that with me. I'm just like, look, I'm not feeding into that. Like, I'll probably talk on it briefly that's it but i'm like man it's it's so much better when you focus on yourself like you make a lot more moves when you're focusing on yourself so but anyways all relevant at the same time it was like videos from 2008 on youtube and stuff so basically yeah yeah, there was a time when some like weird stuff going on in the video whatever yeah Yeah, absolutely there was weird things jokes that weren't funny um the biggest thing was with the will smith yeah. It was him talking about what's going on. I mean, we all saw it unravel. People started off loving Jeffrey and Shane as a duo. They loved their content. And then people started looking into Jeffrey's involvement in by Sister, questioning why Shane supported Jeffrey. And then everyone was digging into them more and more. And people were really upset. On top of that, Jeffrey and Shane's apologies just seemed really bad. And people were not pleased. When he's coming back? Is he coming back? Because I saw something posted like that. Yeah, like I think that he's worked so hard and had such a long career. He's not just going to throw away his YouTube channel. Right. He's had so much success. So he's working on things, but there's no dependent date of like, he's coming back and yeah. Also guys, side notes, very unrelated to this video, but I have a theory that Jeffrey isn't actually making as much money as he claims to be making. I don't, I, I mean, obviously he's like richer than all of us viewers combined. Like that's not true, a question, true, true. but true. I don't think he's like, he he's driving to a make whole Lamborghini, million. Bentleys and all this other stuff, probably wearing thousand dollar Gucci. I'm like, oh yeah, he, he is. I, I, and that's not what I'm about like, I am going to argue with that. Like I, I know. Like, <laughs> I ain't gonna be that person. Like, man, what are you talking? Look, look at my shoes. These shoes literally cost under a hundred dollars. Like, them shoes right there are probably the most expensive shoes I got on camera right now. All right, but other than that, like, all of these shoes are like a hundred, two hundred dollars shoes. I am not rich. I got some Converse down here, bro. This man probably, like, he probably hasn't bought a pair of Converse since he was in high school. So probably not even that, like, middle school. If we're gonna sit down, be on this man was probably making money when he was in high school. So, anyways, million dollars in a year or something like that i don't think his brand is that successful especially now i think it's heavily declined so oh, yeah. yeah for him to be stuff. like oh i need to go back to my business like nobody wants products from you anymore sorry mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a rant uh, then Jeffrey talked about Shane and him still being friends. He said it's not sure when exactly, but Shane will come back to the internet, which has sort of happened already. We've seen Shane in a few of Ryland's videos and in the back in his podcast. Shane's also promoted his merch several times on his Instagram and also posted quite a lot for a person who's been quote unquote on a break from social media. After that, Jeffrey spoke about his brand and how through all of the past year, it's been thriving. Um, okay, most of his products are always on sale and some of his makeup was found in TJ Maxx and a few other sale stores. There isn't anything wrong wow. with buying something from a discount store. Like I yeah. love winners. But that, but that just shows you that it's like business is slow. Like I, I know like, all right, so here's the thing. I don't, I'm just tell you a little thing about sneakers, right? So uh, let's say, all right, let's 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 just say that these shoes right here, let, let me make sure that they're, you know, on camera real quick. By the way, these are my all-time favorite pairs of shoes. So, um, all right, so anyways, the, and it still has, like, the sticker from when I was, like, wearing, well, from when I bought them out of the store and things. 
All right, but let's say that these shoes wasn't, wasn't the most iconic like Jordan shoe of all time, right? All right, so let's just say that this was just some old random shoe on the store, which at one point in time it was. So the shoes would overall like sit on, um, you know, the shelves, like brand spanking new and things like Jordan's doing a bunch of commercials for them and all of that. So they overall like they're sitting on shelves, sitting on shelves and, you know, see where it's like nobody's not really buying them. So then they put a discount price on them. All right. So the shoes, let's say the shoes was like uh 125 right like i think that was like the prices for like jordans back in the day so let's say the shoes is 125 right they're 125 uh and then the discount price let's say that they um bumped them down to like 110 so now they're bumped down to 110 a little bit of a you know decline in pricing and things still nobody's buying them so they decline again i think everybody knows how this works eventually it makes its way out to the nike outlet store and then yeah you'll see them in there for probably like 80 um to probably the 60 to 80 bucks and then uh eventually i think then they'll probably just go back to the factory or something or you know probably the workers would just buy it themselves something but um anyways uh yeah but that overall shows like you know it's it's business is going slow but it's like jordan didn't really have like no controversy and things i just think that that's at times like that's how it is for the sneaker game and stuff so it ain't even got be controversy. Plus, it's like shoes. Shoes can be kind of expensive. So I'm like, bro, I, I might. I I'm trying to think. I haven't been to the Nike outlet store in a while. I might have to make a stop. I like how I'm doing this video and just start thinking about shoe shopping, bro. It's my birthday next week. All right. Shout I'm out. Planning the, I'm but planning it was ahead. ironic since he was mocking other people for having their products in such stores. Then Jeffrey also talked about past drama with Laura and Manny, drama get in one, and then how he and Nikita Dragon aren't friends, and the whole Kanye mm. West stupid dating rumor. Jeffrey admitted to playing along with these rumors for attention. The whole Kanye hookup with Jeffrey was just insane. We're not gonna get into it. Maybe the Kanye. Talk about that. That's funny. Oh my God. True. That, that, it is funny. That it's, say did you hook up, up with Kanye? Well, Absolutely not. You trolled no. it though, and it, you fed into it. Yeah, oh, maybe because awesome. went out for a day, and then I was like, this is actually. I know it's gonna be so. Big. So if funny. people are gonna think this, whatever, I'll play into it. Next up, Roy Wood Jr. and Dolce Sloan shaded Addison Ray on The Daily Show because Addison Ray went on Jimmy Fallon's show and copied black creator dances without ever like crediting them. That was just not okay. And honestly, like, I, you know, with this, it's like, fam, you know, you, you, I see it a lot. And I'm like, I really don't know, like, who the... I think it's just when they get big enough. Like, if she, if she had been getting, like, like, what, 17, 20 likes across her videos, nobody wouldn't care. But it's like, since she's, like, this bigger content creator, expecting her to give out credit and things, that's like, it's not even, like, my thing is this, like, and this is how I see it. You know, it's like, it's not even, like, come out, if she is, like, genuinely, like, stealing these creators dances and she's not apologetic for it because i think i think she it was either her d'amelio wanted somebody somebody that was like of fame on tiktok but bruh like i i grew up watching a lot of different like break dancing movies from uh beach street to there's this uh one other movie i think was it beach street regardless uh that you got sir stumped the yard like they may change it up at times but then there's at times where they're doing like moves where they're spinning on their heads and stuff and i'm like fam who is the original creator of that so it's like they don't be giving them people cre um credit in the movies and things so it's like i just think that it's like it's stuff like that where it's like i think it's up you know it should be left up to the app where it's like, okay, this was the original video on the original bits, and, you know, then, yeah, it's like that stuff could, like, kind of like with YouTube and their copyright claim stuff. So it's like, hey, this dance was, like, originally created by this user. They should have that at the bottom and stuff and so on. So I think that's how they should handle it. It should be, it should be left up to the apps. But it's like you're going to have it where it's like, okay, Addison Ray from Charlie D'Amelio to a Charlie D'Amelio fan to the fan of the Charlie D'Amelio fan. So it's like, it's going to be a bunch of different people doing them dances. So I just think now this is just like an old and dead argument. It's not to like really like cause any problems with people, but I'm just saying it's, it's stuff like this where it's like, you know, you, you guys got to start blaming the apps. At the end of the day, this girl probably is, you, I don't know. She, she's just doing the dance either because she likes it, because it's going to make her some money, whatever. So... I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, there's so many things or it's like uh, pants, like, you know, it's like or a shirt or shoes or whatever. It's like, you know, they, that stuff's already been invented. It's already been created, you know, so it's like you don't see it on the box of Jordan. It's like, oh, we got to give credit to the original shoe creator and stuff. 
It's like, fam, it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, I guess, like, you know, maybe, yeah, they change it up, whatever, but, I mean, it, it's just, to me, it's like, I've, I've heard this argument a lot, and I'm like, dang, people are still getting on people about this, but, there's no disrespect to, like, any creators out there that creates dances and stuff, but it's, like, black or white, so it's like, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, like, it's whatever, but anyway. Honestly, lately, a lot of people have been coming out on TikTok, especially about how these white people have been appropriating black creator dancers and haven't been crediting them. So here is a clip of that. I don't remember which late night show it was, but the white girl went on the late night show doing all the black dances and the black dancers never got credit. So they had to bring the black dancers on like a week later. Like, hey, sorry about that. These are the ones that actually did so the thing. Because that was it, that Addison Rae girl who's been hanging out with Kourtney Kardashian. It is interesting that a girl that was stealing black culture was hanging out with the people that be stealing black culture. I guess she went to, ma I think she wanted to go to a master class on how to steal from black Ooh, culture. saucy. Are I you mean, saucy today? It just makes sense. <laughs> why, why, you study at the feet of the master. You know what I mean? This is honestly like hmm. such a huge deal because a lot of the time these white creators are getting more recognition and more views than the people who actually came yeah. up with the dances and that's fucked up the actual creators of the dances should be getting the recognition for it but like low-key i kind of believe the conspiracy that tiktok's algorithm is like low-key racist i'm not even gonna lie oh no because, their like, no their thing is a little bit jacked up like i i'll admit that and that's what i'm saying like they need to have it where it's set up where it's like okay at the bottom it like shows like like it's because my thing is like this where they have it where it's like the little thing in the circle that shows like the original audio it's like yeah you know a person can take that and you know but it's like if i think they should have it set up where it's like you know they let you know like are you a dancer okay so you're gonna have these tools so when you do see somebody do your dance then overall like yeah you can like take credit and have it at the bottom it's just like the original creator of this dance because it's like what they'll have it where it's all like oh this um uh what you would call it this video uh contains professional stuntmen or so you know like how they have that but it's like the original creator of this dance is this user and so anyway that's what i think they should do but I don't know, but anyway, that's just my, what I would, that's what overall, if it was my app, that's what I would do, where it's like, okay, you know, well, instead of being like, oh, we're sorry that, you know, creators is this, this, and this, like, nah, eliminate all of that, let's give these creators their, um, you know, their credit and stuff, so, but I, I don't know, like, it, it's just, you know, it, it's one of those things, it's like, something needs to be done, because it's, it's, it's just getting to the point where it's like, I hear this so much, and it's like, it's no disrespect to anybody that's talking about it, but it's just like, I hear it so much, where it's like, okay, why hasn't nothing been done yet by, like, TikTok or somebody, so, because it's like, that's where these stuff is going down at, but anyways. Like, how come all of these, like, little white girls are getting all these, like, crazy amount of views, like, Charlie D'Amelio, Addison Rae, where are black dancers at? And lastly, here is a clip of Ethan reacting to a graph that shows- Shout, shout out to, you know, Rae, for just, you know, she, you know, I, I- See, that's why you got you got to like be cool with people like Ray. Ray cool, Ray cool. I like Ray. And Trisha's back and forth tweeting and posting. And you guys, we know that Trisha flooded the internet, oh, especially nah. Twitter with the whole frenemies breakup. But comparing the actual numbers of her posting about it to Ethan's is insane. This is not to harp on the Trisha drama because I'm over it. Emergency Gloomy put together a moving infograph of the live responses on a daily basis regarding the frenemies breakup <laughs> this is pretty interesting i mean i'm just I'm impressed with the work you know she's accused me of dragging it on is that real Dang. 200 <laughs> no. pretty amazing pretty huh? you got five percent of the amount of posts i know by the look of it yeah five percent wow. difference is astronomical oh, i must yeah. like be really? like the no, videos no. and <laughs> tweets for someone and who TikToks. says they don't want to be involved in drama anymore somebody should make these graphs for every problematic influencer maybe a new future on social blade Anyway, here is a clip of Trisha admitting that she loves drama. Let me know what you think about everything that we talked about in mm. the comments down below. What are your thoughts? That was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please make always, sure to give it a thumbs always. up and subscribe. I post new videos every single day. Lately, I've been doing two a days. So oh, yeah, yeah, subscribe. Okay, bye. Been going freaking insane with the video post. I like it though, because I was like, there was at one point in time when she wasn't really posting that much. And I was getting scared. I was like, dang, like, I just recently had it where a friend of mine, she just, you know, like, uh, stepped away from Twitch. So it, it kind of, like, it, it puts fear in me when I see, like, my friends and stuff when they step away from this stuff. Because I'm like, dang, man, it's like, 
y'all had like a good thing going but anyways i mean it is what it is i ain't tripping about it but anyways uh yeah guys make sure y'all go subscribe to ray for more videos like this uh her uh, main channel hot tea uh what am i doing her main channel hot tea her uh second channel ray rahimi and her business channel build your pocket like subscribe to me too and i'll talk to you guys later okay now that you know the thumbs come in and stuff but talk to you guys later thank you guys for watching and peace